It's official. I'm moving to Japan. Yu-Gi-Oh! in Japan is just leagues ahead of Yu-Gi-Oh! in North America. Of course, that's not only because they receive sets before us, but they do so much more with the brand. Now, I recognize that the birthplace of our beloved card game is the most likely candidate to get preferential treatment from Daddy Konami. That doesn't mean I'm not gonna throw a tantrum, though. From still exclusive promotional cards to alternate artwork tied to outside brands, the Yu-Gi-Oh! OCG could be described as extra by us basic white girls here in the TCG. It's time to get lost in the Yu-Gi-Oh! OCG and the cards that we will probably never see here in the West. Starting with a familiar face from our topic on Yu-Gi-Oh! and food brand collaborations, Potato and Chips and their pair of Potato Chip themed supporting cards, Soul Unseal and Farm Delivery. From their late 2018 promotion, these cards could be found inside the specially branded bags of Calbee Potato Chips. And while the chips are marketed as a light, salty, and crispy snack, these cards are sweet. I said it once, and I'll say it again. I would have loved to play a potato chip themed deck at Locals. I've play tested the cards in a hybrid, new age plant synchro deck, and they're really fun. Something I've never really dived into in the previous installments of this pseudo-series is how we in the West could import these cards outside of just throwing them in as promotional cards with a product or just being a standard inclusion to a set. I still believe that Konami of America could tie these into a promotion with a chip brand. I know it's far easier said than done, but I also know that Konami has far more connections than we give credit for. We may not be breaking into the Lay's market, but hell, maybe give these cards to a failing brand of potato chips and reignite their sales, or even something new and exclusive to a hobby shop like FYE. I'll vouch for the latter personally with the interesting food collabs we've seen from them with the Winged Dragon of Ramen and Yu-Gi-Oh! Cereal. I may not have a PhD in dueling, but I did get my degree from Hustlers University, and I still see these as possibilities that make sense and should be explored. Like Japan explores innovative and exciting ways to premiere their cards, True Exodia stands out as a great example, a level 1 dark spellcaster effect monster that causes your opponent to win the duel if you control it and four different Forbidden One normal monsters. Okay, so maybe the effect is kind of whack, but would you just look at that artwork? Somebody come and look at this. Look at this. Featuring artwork from the late Kazuki Takahashi himself, rest in peace to the goat. This new Exodia variant debuted in Japan's 20th anniversary Monster Art Box, one year after the Calbee collaboration, a specialty collector box that we have absolutely no equivalent to in the TCG. It came with three books featuring extended card artworks, one of which was fully dedicated to the artwork of Kazuki Takahashi, as well as a 20th anniversary secret rare promo, True Exodia Card. With a product like this, I feel the TCG fanbase kind of shows its ass. There isn't a massive demand for something like this in the West because the majority of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s North America demographic aren't hardcore collectors for memorabilia. Not to say that there aren't players who would buy this, but the margin just isn't there, so I have to give Konami a pass for not importing this to the TCG world. And unfortunately, if we do ever receive this card, it will be a miscellaneous promo card to an unrelated product, or, best case scenario, it gets roped in with the Lost Art promotional cards. The Lost Art promotion feels like the perfect home for a lot of these cards, especially our next four cards. Through January and early February of 2022, players in Japan of the mobile game adaptation of Konami's Power Pros baseball game could obtain two Yu-Gi-Oh! promotional cards by completing missions in the game. When a mission was completed, you could bring your phone to partnered locations and show the staff to obtain a promotional pack which featured the brand new Power Pro Lady Sisters, stylized as the Harpy Ladies, a level 6 wind winged beast normal monster with 1950 attack and 2100 defense, as well as a new alternate art of Dark Magician done in the art style of the Power Pro games. I shouldn't even have to explain how Japan does it better at this point, this is how you get your player base engaged with your product and IPs, and both being under Konami makes it even easier, but they didn't stop there. Just a year later, in the same time frame of 2023, players in Japan could complete two missions in the Power Pros baseball game to obtain two brand new promotional cards. The premier Power Pro Night Sisters, a level 4 light warrior normal monster with 1200 attack and 2400 defense. Damn, she got a fat ass and a new alternate art for reinforcement of the army, redrawn in the art style from the game. 
The same praise can be given to this promotion as was given to the previous one. Looking at how to import these cars to the TCG in the same way that Japan did is a bit more troublesome. The Power Pro series isn't anywhere near as popular in the US as it is in Japan. Don't get me wrong, we still have the games, but I feel like a promotion similar to what Japan did, or even just including the cards in a re-release and or in a new game title for the series, would actually fall under the radar of the majority of the player base. And even though they're baseball themed cards in essence, it would make even less sense and perform even worse if Konami of America decided to attach these cards to a new official Major League Baseball video game. Maybe there's something I'm missing though, perhaps the fandom crossover for Pro Baseball and the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG is massive. This event specifically though featured a fun easter egg in its promotional material showing Yugi stylized as a Power Pro character holding a Dark Magician card, which appears to feature the original starter deck Yugi artwork redrawn in the Power Pro's art style. I don't believe this was ever made into a physical card, but still a nice throwback inclusion, tying in a little bit of nostalgia and probably drew in more players to the promotion. When you think of how to draw in an American audience to a promotional event, the easiest way to do that is with food. And before you get upset about that, one, stop lying to yourself, and two, I'm just as guilty of it. I'm a sucker for promotional food collaborations. 7-Eleven in Japan is a constant collaborator with Konami. They get hella promos to the point where 7-Eleven basically has its own art style within the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And this is even expanded into Rush Duel cards as well. Throughout the years, Japan has received alternate arts of popular nostalgic monsters through 7-Eleven promotions. And it's so easy too, most of the time you're just buying a quick bite from 7-Eleven and you get handed a promo card with your purchase. I'm not lying, I'm scheduling my one-way flight to Japan as we speak. In their older standard game promotions, 7-Eleven has put out promos featuring chibi artworks of Dark Magician, Buster Blader, Blue Eyes White Dragon, Time Wizard, Red Eyes Black Dragon, Dark Paladin, Marshmallow, and XYZ Dragon Cannon. For Rush Duel inclusive promotions, Japan saw new alternate art chibi promos of Elemental Heroes Avion, Sparkman, and Burstinatrix, as well as Gaia the Fierce Knight, Curse of Dragon, and Gaia the Dragon Champion, among others. With the revamp that 7-Eleven's outside of Japan will be seeing, I'm hoping that we'll see the future tie-ins make their way to 7-Eleven in America. With how many classic monsters have been included in past promotions, it's right up Konami of America's alley with nostalgia bait. And the final lost card that I want to talk about is a certified hood classic. One that almost everyone knows and has been waiting patiently to be imported outside of Japan. In Japan's weekly Shonen Jump magazine, issue 2 of 2012, Yu-Gi-Oh! fans would find a promotional card that has eluded the western market for now over a decade. Some speculate that the promotional card simply didn't align with the English translated Shonen Jump magazine outside of Japan, as we would receive different promotional cards. Others speculate that the original artist of this featured card refused to have it redrawn and censored for a western audience, because the last thing we want the TCG player base to see is some B-cup titties. One of the most famous OCG exclusive cards, and one of the few non-English cards that I've ever sought to buy personally, I'm talking about none other than Magi Magi Star Magician Gal, the Xyz Dark Magician Girl. A rank 6 dark spellcaster effect monster with 2400 attack and 2000 defense, requiring two level 6 spellcasters for the Xyz summon. It has the soft once per turn effect to detach an Xyz material to either take control of an opponent's monster for the turn, a la change of heart, or you can special summon a monster from your opponent's graveyard. So not only is it an exclusive card, but it's pretty great too. The worst of both worlds to a TCG duelist. If the rumor is true, regarding this card's original artist wanting the design to remain true to their original idea, this may be one of the few cards that we will never see at any point in Yu-Gi-Oh's future of the TCG. Unless it gets pulled into the Lost Art promotion, but at the same time it doesn't necessarily fit that criteria because we've never received a found artwork so to speak. At the end of the day, I could point out at least two or more tie-ins for how each of these currently lost cards could be imported properly to the TCG while still mirroring the respect that Konami of Japan treats the game with. Granted, that's coming from someone who doesn't fully understand the intricacies of how a juggernaut like Konami goes into brand collaborations and how those partnerships come to life. Knowing Konami of America, we'd probably fumble every step along the way, but we can at least try. But 
That's going to wrap up today's discussion, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Which of these lost cards do you most want to see imported to the TCG? Drop a comment down below. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV. Signing up.